Hello everyone and welcome by the Orchid Saga. So yeah, today we start outside. Um, first of all, I hope everyone has a or had a wonderful uh, Easter weekend. Um, so yeah, like I said, we start outside because I, uh, well actually, a, my colleague, a good family friend, put up uh, this shade netting. And last year I didn't uh, need a shade netting because this willow tree was here. But due to the storm, it uh, almost came out of the ground, as you probably can see. And it's now completely in the angle, so we only get uh, the stem here of the tree, because we really like it. But sadly, the tree had to go, because it did get very dangerous. But the willow tree did uh, provide quite some shade on my greenhouse. And now, because it's gone, and it's very, very sunny, the Celeste, uh, well, we a few days and a, uh, a few weeks back, we had a beautiful weather, a lot of sun. My greenhouse is uh, starting to warm up quite a bit. And also, I think some orchids are, did get almost burned. So I will uh, show them uh, to you in a minute. But yeah, I came uh, up with this idea to put shade netting on. And you can see it's a very sh uh, sh uh, shiny uh, day, very stark, uh, <laughs> stark. Uh, strong sunlight because of the shade here of this rose so i chose to go because i found it very hard to choose which um, shade netting to use i would like um I, I would like the white one because i think it looks prettier but uh, how much percentage uh, coverage it uh, i needed i wasn't sure so i did go with the 15 percent of uh yeah i think you call it coverage uh, filtering um, because I have of course also my polycarbonate on um, the uh, greenhouse plus on the inside I have my bubble wrap so I thought I'm not sure but I, this was my thought process I thought well maybe those two the polycarbonate and the uh, uh, the bubble wrap together are probably maybe also something around 15% uh, filtering the light so I thought well let's go with a shade netting of 50% as well so I at least have 30% of uh, filtering uh, direct sunlight I'm not sure maybe uh, you think otherwise please let me know but I think um, it's enough so I just wanted to give you an idea uh, about the strong sunlight before we go in so you can see probably the difference so let's enter the greenhouse and I hope you can see the camera picks up and yes I do have the lights on still but that's that's uh, they can go out because they do probably do nothing with this amount of Sun so um, yeah maybe here you can see with my valves that I think it's pretty nice light compared to outside it was very bright this is from the inside out and you can see the uh, bubble wrap still there I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so those layers I think that's enough but I'm not sure but I think this looks really nice and I hope it will like show uh, nicely on uh, the video as well and you can see uh, with that strong light the lamps do not much they still of course give some light as you can see when I hold my hand above the leaf there's some shading there but I just adjusted the uh, timer so they will go out and I from now on I will have them not on in uh, during the day they will start in the morning around 8 o'clock and then about 11 o'clock they will shut down until 5 o'clock in the afternoon then when they will turn on the lights again uh, right about uh, 8 in the evening that's for now and probably during um, the season when we do have more uh, beautiful weather more sun I will turn them off um, longer maybe uh, around nine o'clock in the morning something like that so but yeah this is basically without the lights the natural daylight that I get now for my orchids and I think it's pretty nice we have some shading if I put my leaf uh, my hand in front of the leaf that's a bit how I test it I also Grab the leaves, but these are not warm, so that's that's nice, of course. But because of that uh, 
sunshine I, ha I need to have my vans on um, so I can get some air out from outside so I hope you can still hear me I wear my mic so it should be okay but yeah otherwise it will be way too warm it's now with the uh, vans on oops uh, about 30 degrees but here is uh, where the sun is really hitting the greenhouse so that's uh, almost up against the roof so there it's now 33 Celsius uh, degrees Celsius <laughs> let's see I have a meter here as well that says here uh, 27 let's zoom in 27 and the um, humidity is now uh, as you can see around uh, uh, 29 that's very low but I don't have it my humidifier on right now because it's it just cannot compete with uh, with the sun so during the day it's a little bit dry but as soon as we get into the evening let's say around six or seven o'clock I will turn it on back on and then it will do its job and uh, I will shut down the door probably because otherwise it, it doesn't really work because the immunity goes out quite quickly so um, but then it uh, will be nice again around 70 65 70 percent and I also spray my orchids in the morning these days. I really give them a good shower with my uh, electric uh, sprayer. You can see here. That's why it's still here on the floor because I now use it uh, every day. And I have this uh, top thing, this nozzle that I need. And then I put it on and I really give them a good soak. And I think they really like it, especially the ones uh, like Phenoliopsis with the aerial roots. And you can see I still have nice big fat roots. They're not drying, but I always keep an eye on it. But I did it last year like this as well. And uh, I think so far so good. They really enjoy it. I have not drying up root tips. It's just a few hours where it's a little bit drier. As you can see, they are even uh, really uh, reacting to the uh, nice uh, circumstances. <laughs> they really start growing their roots. So I think uh, we we'll, uh, are okay. So that's the first update and I did forget to mention it in my intro but this is the bloom buds and such which is basically an update on the greenhouse on my plants and other things that's going around and of course also updates on my orchid room which is there and I'm pointing that out because I have some new subscribers and I would like to say thank you of course to uh, all my subscribers but especially as well to the uh, newcomers and I really hope you enjoy it here I really uh, see it as a compliment when you decided to subscribe to my channel, give my videos a thumbs up. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I have my warmer growers inside of the greenhouse and I have the more cooler growers inside the orchid room. So we can have a look quite quickly because it's the season again. And you can see very strong light here as well. So I have some odontoglossum types there as well that can take uh, the sun a bit more but it's a bit cooler here let me show it to you it's here it says 24 as you can see so it always stays a bit cooler 46 uh, percent humidity i have a humidifier here as well that really does the job as you can see it's even a uh, wetter floor but i leave this one on because of my miltoniopsis they cannot uh, not really live without it but as you can see i have quite a few already in bloom so we will have a beautiful blooming update soon of course but just a uh, sneak peek <laughs> and this is the one that recently opened up and these are so beautiful these are my absolute favorites i really love them but yeah so here i have uh, miltoniopsis odontoglossum types maxillarias basically the ones that i think and see on other channels as a more cooler growers or more shady ones and like i said i try to uh, most of the times go with experience to put some in a more a brighter uh, section like the colmenara might say red just like a little bit more uh, sunlight or more light i should say not direct sunlight but uh, and i always feel the leaves and these feel uh, nice cool even though with a lot of light on it but this is uh, maybe slightly, no, it's more on the cool side than on the warm side. And I have painted this glass. It's also um, 
there is a sort of type of coating on the on the glass. I don't know how to call it, but that's also to reduce the sunlight. Plus, as you can see, I have painted it with um, how do you call it? Temperson is it's called. It's basically a chalk paint that you can put on, and that helps as well. But I still can see quite a lot through the window, so that means it's the layer isn't isn't that thick anymore. But I will have a piece of shade netting here as well. I didn't do it uh, uh, already, but it will be here very soon, probably this week. So just to be uh, sure. But so far it's not that warm here and the leaves aren't warm. But I keep checking them for you never know. Of course, and my Ludicia orchids are underneath here because these really do not like the sun. So I try to protect them. As you can see, there's already a bit of sunshine really close to them, but it will not um, reach them because otherwise uh, the leaves will get uh, orange quite quickly and start to browning up. So that's uh, that's not nice. And I have here, it's no idea, but this one is really working on two beautiful spikes. We see one in the back there and this one, it's a beautiful purple, purple one. So that's something to look forward to, of course. And I have, yeah, let's go outside. I have something, well, a few things to share. Bloom and Budweiss. <laughs> first of all, this is the first for me, an Encyclia to rebloom. And this is the Encyclia temp temp Temperance Alba version. And I thought it had four spikes but yesterday I saw another one so I will have five spikes and it's the first bloom for me I don't not sure yeah it had spikes before before I can see here so it's not the first time for the arc itself but I uh, did get it without the blooms so yeah it's definitely something to look forward to and the arms are back as you can see here is one sitting there it is whoops <laughs> So yeah, they are not very harmful, I think, but I have I, quite a lot of them always. They are very um, early this year, I think, due to the nice weather we have here in the, in the Netherlands. Quite warm. So that's the first uh, update on uh, blooms. And buds. This one is still there. It's such a pretty one. Spring Eclipse, Dendrobium Spring Eclipse. Um, I have a Tolumnia in bloom. Let's zoom in. I will have closer looks, a better shots in my blooming update but it's such a beautiful one i hope you can see the colors whoops because of the strong backlight whoops where am i i'm sorry <laughs> not sure i don't think it's showing very well but it will be soon on my channel so if you're curious the blooming up will date will be there soon like i said but i have something in bloom and this is my most expensive orchid whoops i'm sorry guys for the Oops, there we go. I need to grab it because it was very high in the sky. Let me uh, give you a little bit of darker uh, background. Isn't this beautiful? Very beautiful orange colors. With that bit of pink uh, and uh, purple on the lip. It's beautiful. And this is a cross and that makes it a, a bit expensive between my two most beautiful family apses. Well, I don't have them, I've said it wrong, but the ones that I really like, especially the Digentica Alba Taiwai. I really, really like that one, but it's a very expensive. And the other one as well, of course, the uh, Mito Golden Tiger. But there are a few different varieties as far as I could see, but some of them are so incredibly beautiful. So this one was the half of the price of the uh, two parents, around 70 euros. For me, that's very expensive. But I thought, yeah, this orange, I really, really like it. And it does very well. And this is the first bloom. As you can see, it has another spike, but I don't think it does continue. Well, maybe some buds coming there. I'm not sure. But at least this new one. It's just facing the other way, uh, way around, but it lives right up there so i need to put it back with one hand but i just wanted to show you this beautiful one so it's very uh, happy there as it looks <laughs> so uh yeah that's something really uh, beautiful new here 
another new thing I have with my Akarna hall, some dead robiums, and these started to uh, put out new roots, so they are, uh, are adapting to the new system, self-watering, and I put them up there, those three, three uh, grey pots, next to my gigantic dendrobium chrysanthemum orange type, it's really huge. The canes are about two meters, two meters, the last one that I've measured is this one, was around 220 centimeters, so two meters, point two. <laughs> So that's very, very, very long. And I didn't measure this one, but this one is making a, a different, sh strange shape here because of I, uh, I uh, tied it to the roof, but otherwise it will hang here and I cannot walk here. So therefore it's searching for the light in different directions, <laughs> but it's very, very long. So I need to tie it up. And it's still working on that new growth that is growing very well. And also it has a cakey here. So I thought, well, I would like to have some more dendrobiums that are basically hanging over the pot. So I thought that's a nice corner, I think. Oh yeah, that does remind me. Here you see the fells with the orange colors on the leaves. I think that were the two plants that I mentioned when I started this video. But maybe that's because of the strong light. I'm not completely sure it can be a division. Uh, deficiency, I'm sorry, <laughs> from uh, Epsom salt, something like that, but I think it's the sun, because this one has it as well, whoops, just need to see what I'm walking, this one is starting to yellow up a little bit on the leaves, so that's a sign for me that it has too much light, it did receive too much light, problem should be solved, and also this dendromid, this one is extremely purple, whoops, there we go, it's uh, my dendrobium Taiwan black and because of it has that dark pigment in it it does show up a little bit but this is way too dark <laughs> and that's because it's, it was standing over here and this one hasn't it, it, this, these leaves are, do not look very nice because of the aphids and spider mites but they do not get purple as you can see so this one does get the same amount of light as this one did get but this one hasn't has a good root system so then you can have easily even more sunburn than when it's very happy and growing very well you can see these are not getting burned at all but as soon as it's a little bit less happy <laughs> it will uh, show as well so always keep an eye on uh, on your orchids and there go the goes the lines out Hmm, or is this a little bit too dark without the lights? So hard to tell, yeah, this is, I think it's almost a little bit too dark. But I see some shade when I put my hand above it. See, so that should be fine, I think. I, this part I always find a little bit hard. <laughs> because especially with the um, summer grow, oh, no, some of the warmer growers, Escatleas, they do need a light to bloom. Hmm, need to think about it, but I still can see more shade than I thought. So I think what happens is because this is so bright, everything around it does look darker than it maybe is. Hmm, I'm not sure. And yesterday I was working with uh, getting some weeds out, so it's a little bit messy uh, today in my uh, greenhouse. But I, um, I noticed, and you probably noticed that I hadn't film for a few days i think around uh, 11 or 12 days because it's very busy i'm very uh, busy at work and so i thought yeah i need to film now today so therefore i'm a little bit rambling <laughs> because i'm really miss filming i really enjoy it and i really enjoy you um subscribing to my channel and and watching my videos so i apologize but i really enjoy it so that's why i'm rambling around and get distracted very easily because of these beautiful blooms. <laughs> Epidendrums here. You can see three different colors. This one is uh, called Epidendrum Orange. And this is just a hybrid. But that one is very orange. This is more yellow orange. But I do like them both. And then we have the Red Dragon over there. And I also have this beauty 
still working on new blooms they are all beautiful but this is the cupin um Japan cupid it's such a beautiful little family opposite with such beautiful blooms very bright and i really enjoy the yellow and the oranges so this one and it was the last one so i thought i'm not sure about the quality <laughs> but so far it's really doing well it's really doing well for me but as you can see it's a very small i have it next to my mini mark so i thought well and i have another no idea with very small blooms so i like to uh, put them together <laughs> my dwarfs <laughs> family ups as dwarfs so um yeah soriana is still blooming beautiful so yeah those were uh, for now i think the updates and as you can see already the algae is starting algae is starting on my vases with the vendas anyhow i need to live with it i don't like it i can clean this now but in a week it's it's back so I will wake a few more weeks, I think. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a, found a very nice, a good treat for it. Probably some of you suggested to paint the, the vases, put something around it. I probably will do that someday. I'm not sure what. I think some fabric. I would like to paint them, as you may know or not. I like to paint and draw as well on canvases and paper. Uh, so I could make some... Um, some nice paintings but i don't, just don't have the time so that's why i uh, don't did it yet so yeah i uh, i had uh, quite some things to share i hope i soon will uh, have the ability to film again and then we will have a close look up by uh genre i thought that would be nice just to see how they do if they do make new growths and uh, new roots etc and i would like to talk a little bit more about my new setup with the net pots uh but with a water a water reservoir so basically cell watering but with net pots and why i do that i thought that's nice and someone is starting to go over it's still beautiful it has some spikes left but yeah that's uh, for another video so for now thank you for watching and as usual if you have any questions please uh, leave them in the comment section below and of course, uh, I really, really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>